From Grove Studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan, an awesome space to record a podcast or hold your band practice, as I just showed our guests, without disturbing the neighbors. You can practice your DJ skills in one of the rooms here. Grove Studios is in Ypsilanti and certainly findable on Google. And if you're looking for a place to practice, I highly recommend it. I have been using it for a podcast studio for a year and a half. My name is John Bomarito, And today on Acoustic Alternatives, it's good to reconnect with a guest I haven't had a chance to chat with since I looked it up, Chris, July of 2018. Whoa. I know. Well, that's a long time ago. It is a long time ago. And it's only but look how good we still look. We do look pretty good. Four years. And, uh, I know. Still okay. I want to thank the generous support of Zingerman's Gray Line in Ann Arbor. They are a great place you can trust if you're looking to hold an event. I'll talk more about them in the middle of the show. And uh, this is a place I have DJed weddings many times, and I highly recommend it. But uh, again, we'll talk more about Zingerman's later. But you can check zingermansgrayline.com. Open up another browser if you're listening to this on your web browser and just check them out while we're talking to Chris Trapper. Hello, Chris. Good morning. I mean, good afternoon. I don't know what time people are listening. People might hear this, so good good day. Good day is how we, we, how about do, that? we do cover it that way. You know, I, I was wondering how you say Ypsilanti. Was I punch it, it punched it into my GPS. So I was like, how, I wonder if that Y is silent or, or but yeah. Ypsilanti. Ypsilanti. Yeah. That's how we say it. Ypsilanti. And most people short it to, shorten it to Ipsy just because it's easy. Yeah. There's actually a song by Loudon Wainwright III called Ypsilanti. That's funny. You know, there's a lot of good Michigan songs. There are. Like, like where the towns are in songs, which is cool. Took me four days to hitchhike from Saginaw. So, ah, yeah. come yeah. to look for. Uh, where there's, a, there's the old Lefty Frizzell song, uh, Saginaw, Michigan, mm -hmm. which uh, that's a great song. Got too. a gal from Kalamazoo. Yeah, yeah. Detroit Rock City. Yeah. We could do this all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know you got Boston songs in you, but any uh, any Michigan songs in your catalog? Uh, I don't think I do. Honestly, I think I should, though. I should start working on that. You have a pretty good fan base here. Yeah, it's not bad. I know not some bad. of them personally. Getting better, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, your newest album I'm going to hold up to the cameras is Cold Water Waltz, and uh, it's the 10th full length. Is that correct? Do you have the numbers in your head? You know, I stopped counting back in uh, 2004. Okay. Because, like... Because I think I'm going to make a lot of these things. Good. So I can just stop counting. Well, pretty sure this is the 10th full length. There was an EP yeah. that came out digitally only, and it was an excellent album released back in 2020. Was that 2020 or 2021 now? I've lost track. That record was 2020. I just remember at the start of the uh, kind of pandemic lockdowns. It's, it's interesting. Michigan was one of the last gigs that I played was at 20 Front Street. Yeah. And uh, I remember missing that. I think I was at Howard Jones that night. Yeah, just re well, that's a better choice than seeing me. But uh, no, uh, but but so so um, twenty front street. Just remember that that news had, had started to spread about the pandemic. I'd just get, gotten back from a cruise that 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 I had hosted where you had to fill out paperwork about being sick or not being sick, and and then at the Michigan show, it was the best crowd I ever played for here. Cool for just my own show headlining, and uh, I just remember making a joke. At the start of the show, you know, thinking that that this is no big deal and people are are freaking out about nothing, I just said nobody nobody cough because there'll be a mass exodus out the door, and then there's a little chuckle and you know I realize oh people didn't laugh that much so maybe yeah and then uh, so just when I was home I had written a lot of songs d during during a tour in 2019 I opened for Rob Thomas over the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was writing a lot of songs then. So when I was home uh, off the road, all, all my tours canceled. So I figured that, you know, why not make a record? Because, you know, you can fly tracks around remotely now. So so I had some of my favorite players play on it. Most of it is really, really simple. It's just me on guitar. So It's a great record. I don't even know if I answered your, your actual question. but I don't know either. Uh, yeah. What was my question? <laughs> I'm sorry to keep track. I think the segue is, why don't you play a song from it? Okay. <laughs> I'll play the first song from it. Sounds good. I remember sitting out on the staircase Though I was just in fourth grade Still I was worrying about my life I was always outside Finding places to hide Since the day I realized That I could never break up your fights And all will be forgiven If we keep our secrets hidden 
But into the dark, into the dark we'll go When I left your town I always kept my head down Worked till my hands hurt Till I could barely pay my rent But I would always call home And ask you how are things going And if you got a laugh Out of the funny birthday card I sent And all will be forgiven If we all just keep on sinning Into the dark, into the dark we'll go We'll go into the shadows On a boat without a paddle And hope that it all, hope that it all will float Only you know All that you are Secrets burn slow And light up our homes Under blue stars But all's well that ends well I'm here in this hotel Holding on the memories of all the things that I let go But I still see you waving At me from the driveway And I still feel your love even though you left so long ago And all will be forgiven If we all just keep on living Into the dark, into the dark we'll go We'll go into the shadows On a boat without a paddle And hope that it all, hope that it all will float Only you know All that you are The secrets burn slow And light up our homes Under blue stars Under Blue Star is a track you can find on the newest Chris Trapper album, which is called Cold Water Waltz. And Chris is my guest today on Acoustic Alternatives, brought to you by Zingerman's Grey Line. Chris, thank you for playing that. Hey, absolutely. Love hearing your voice sing just about anything, really. A little out of tune, but... Uh, is it? But, well, my, not, not, not my voice. The The guitar has been... Has been a, you know, I've been in different temperatures lately, so, so yeah. each town's a little different. So. They certainly I'm just are. making excuses. A poor <laughs> craftsman blames his tools. <laughs> I'm allowed. I'm allowing it. To happen yeah, thank today. you. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's back up way back. You grew up in Buffalo, New York, before migrating to Westwood, Massachusetts, which right. is near Boston. Yeah. Besides cold, what was it like growing up in Buffalo? Because I know that's a similar climate to what we have here. Yeah. So, um, you know, I love Buffalo, and I go there. I go there all the time. I still have a lot of family there. You know, I'm the youngest of six siblings, so we wow. so we grew up in a three bedroom house. Hmm. Uh, with one bathroom, which my dad occupied most of the time, because I think it was the only place where he could find peace of mind. Uh, Makes sense. So it was just very, very close, very intimate, very musical, uh, very lots of alcohol, alcohol problems, which you spread addiction problems over the years for the whole family, basically. Uh, but, but just lots of love, lots of laughter. And so I think Buffalo... Because I think Buffalo as a greater whole kind of, kind of kind of equals that to, to me. It's it's the, the the people there feel very special and and very down to earth and humble. Even the people who who have means there are are good people. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but I'm fortunate enough to to meet people in all different places of all different socioeconomic backgrounds, and so you, so you just you start to recognize. You start to recognize trends amongst people. And so I always think that Buffalo are just some of the nicest people around, the most generous, hold the door for you, light your cigarette, uh, buy you a drink, that that kind of, you know, those kind of people. So it's in my family, he was musical. Uh, At the same time, one of my brothers was super into Jimi Hendrix and playing guitar. Uh, My my closest in age brother to, to me, he was listening to Barbra Streisand in show tunes, hmm. so he's my brother who was who was into Hendrix t- taught me a couple chords on guitar, you know. I was listening to, to show tunes like constantly because my brother had, had the lead in, in the High School Musical, and he suddenly became really really cool in school and very popular. So I had those crossroads of he was listening to show tunes, 
and Jimi Hendrix. So it was a weird mix of things. But uh, I get it. Then started writing songs when I was thirteen years old. My parents were, were super encouraging. That they would have they would have said if I if I had said I wanted to be a lawyer that they would have said why. But when I said I want to want to be a singer songwriter, they were like, "You go get them. That's a great idea." Nice. Because my dad, I think, I think raising six kids, I think he had such a pressure just to bring home a paycheck that he never really got to live his dreams or his joy. So he wanted all of his kids to to work a job that that they that they enjoyed. And so he would always say, "Do do something you love to do. You can figure out the you can figure out the money part later." That. That will come, and I, I, I've been super fortunate to to play music professionally f- now for twenty two years or tw- twenty three years. Which, which I just think, if you're if you're lucky enough to to, to have the word play <laughs> in your job title, that, that's pretty freaking awesome. It's a good so, point. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to do something that I don't normally do during the middle. I'm going to try and move this so I can actually see your face. There we go. Oh, I can yeah, see your face now. Yeah, oh, <laughs> hey, something I realized as I was introducing the idea that you lived in Buffalo was that we get along for a couple of reasons. We're the same age, right. but we both grew up in border towns, like Canada, just across the border. Totally, yeah. You absorbed a lot of Canadian radio, probably just like I did. Totally, like, yeah. You, yeah. you know more Guess Who songs than most of your, fr- your friends. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. I was super into this this one 80s band, Strange Advance, oh, um, remember them. from Canada, who nobody knows in the U.S. They, were, they had many hits in Canada. <laughs> But that seeped over the border, so I actually lost my virginity to to one of their songs, and then over the years, I, you know, became friends with one of the guys and got to tell him that. <laughs> That's a weird thing to tell but somebody. Very, very weird. But but he was honored. He, he I bet. Said oh, that. thank you. No one's ever said that before. Yeah. <laughs> there's a Buffalo actually plays an important part in one of my favorite bands, and there's a tie in there as well. When uh, for a while I ran a Canadian import company selling music from Canada stores across the USA. And stores in Buffalo kept ordering this band's CDs. I'm like, why do I not know Great Big C? Uh, there <laughs> you go, yeah. like, one day I just cracked one open. I'm like, oh my God, I've been missing out on this. <laughs> yeah. I opened everything else I had. So yeah. We'll get to that later because yeah, yeah, there's okay. a tie in there. Yeah. But yeah, kind of just thought about that. And I thought about, I wonder where Chris's family vacationed. You were so close to Toronto and Niagara Falls. I'm yeah. like, where did you guys go? When you well, we'd vacation? go to the falls all the time because yeah. there's this one there was this one restaurant that had a balcony right on the strip Niagara Falls, Canada, which is a much more touristy section and international section. The Niagara Falls, New York's a little dicey, but but Niagara Falls, Canada is just hopping. So my parents and my brothers and I, we just go sit at this restaurant, the patio, and, and just people watch. Because <laughs> you're actually above the people. It was a second floor balcony, so you could just sit and watch all the people walk by. And my parents love to do that, just, just sit and watch people and, and observe, so... That was that was one of my most fun fun memories, and then then when I was about nineteen, I went to Young Street in Toronto and played on the street there, uh, full of record stores. Sam, the record man, record stores them, yeah. and l- lots of people, and I yep. you know made money singing on the street. What that wasn't something that I did often, but that was I don't know why I picked Young Street. Just just was something in my mind to do. So it's most popular street there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with six kids though. I can't imagine there was a ton of. Like vacations was there? No, I mean we didn't. We, we. It's it's funny because my kids, I have two teenage boys. And they've been to India. They've been to Lebanon. They they've been to they've been to Hollywood a bunch of times. They they've been to to New York City and all all the you know small states and bigger states. But when I was a kid, remember we took one vacation to Nashville, which was cool. Let, we drove by Johnny Cash's house and <laughs> and then we went to. I think like Cape Cod once, which from Buffalo was a big trip. That that, that was yeah. a big deal, but we never flew. Let, let my mom. The mom flew once in her whole life, uh, so very very kind of local vacations. Well, you had no idea how much traveling was going to be in your life in the future, did you? <laughs> That's actually a great point. Um, but I still love trip. Like, like I love driving. I love. Like I don't. I don't love flying, but but I yeah I like it now. I used to hate it, but but uh, yeah, it's something. We used to have a highway right behind our house. We used to live right on the ninety highway, mm-hmm. so so I could see it from my bedroom. And I used to just watch the trucks all the time driving by, and late at night, you know when you know I couldn't sleep, get to stare at the trucks, 
you know, always wonder what truck drivers' lives were like. And then over the years, I realized that's basically half my job is being a truck driver, except I'm delivering songs rather than apples. So, <laughs> And thank you for doing that. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking about uh, another part of your childhood that maybe you're describing mm. in your song, Wish I Was Cool. It sounds like you were bullied. Is that true? Um, that song that definitely has that sort of like, if that is a true story. Of I mean, I, I was definitely, but I mean, I mean, I hate to be so dramatic about it just, just because, because I think everyone was on some extent, level. Yeah. Um, over the years, a lot of my high school, high school, I just opened for, for Pat Benatar a few months ago. I saw that. And so a bunch of my high school high school classmates ca- came to that show in, in support of me. They're like, we have to go see Trapper open up for, for, for Pat Benatar. But in all, actuali- in all actuality, in my high school years, you know, I had maybe a couple friends maximum. I was definitely not cool at all. I stuttered very badly. So like, I had one guy who picked on me constantly about that. And like, like just the classic... Just iconic bully, just uh, but I think everybody had that on some level. But but it, it the stuttering was definitely something that kind of that that kind of sent me to my bedroom. You know, the guitar became a great escape from that. And then over the years, the guitar and singing, you know, brought me uh, basically everything I couldn't get because of my stuttering and lack of confidence for that. And so suddenly. People wanted to talk to me. People wanted to buy me drinks that that I never met before. You know, girls, you found me handsome <laughs> suddenly. So, 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 you saw all the good things kind of kind of came from music. I was going to ask you actually, know. what came first, gu- girls or guitars? <laughs> uh, oh, definitely guitars before uh, girls. Yeah, well, I meant like, were you inspired because oh, if I play the guitar, girls will like me? No, you know what? It's I mean, I think that that's definitely part of it for everybody. But but. For me, it became more of a way to say things to that that I couldn't say in conversation, and and it became it was a real escape. You know, songwriting became just just a yeah. It was a whole bunch of things. It was identity. It was confidence. Um, escape from my family when, when things got chaotic, uh, which that first song reflected a lot of that that stuff back then. Um, but then. Then mostly joy has come from music, including like being on tour, being able to, you know, play for people, and so yeah. When did you go from the bedroom to playing on stages, and was there a particular performer that might have had an impact on you wanting to do that? Yeah, actually, I'd say my two high school music t- teachers were like my my biggest c- c- kind of supporters, propping me up, because I just remember my ninth grade music t- teachers. At one point, she was like, "Chris, you you can really sing." It's true. It was the first time I'd ever heard anybody say anything like like that confidently, who was kind of respected by people. You know what I mean? And I was, I was like, "Oh, but like she thinks I'm good. That's pretty awesome." Then my high school music t- teacher was the same exact way. She was like, "Chris, you should really stick with it. Like like you have a talent for it." And and uh, she actually gave me my first paying gig. It was an, an Episcopal church choir that needed an alto. <laughs> When I was in high school, my voice changed very, very late. So I was 17, and still my voice hadn't changed. So I'd be like, hey, Trapper, hey, Trapper. I'd be like, hey, guys, how's it going? Like, like you know what I mean? So, yeah. so, But I make a paycheck from singing music, like 150 bucks a month. Uh, and in high school, that 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 was decent money back yeah, then. So for sure. So uh, then as far as songwriting, I had a friend of mine who I used to, I used to turn his poems into songs. He was a great poet. And so I'd, so I had the challenge to, to try to just interpret what his lyrics meant in, in just to find the, the right chords that, that fit that, that particular emotion that he was trying to convey. And so he and I became a Simon and Garfunkel t- type of duo where I, where I was both Simon and Garfunkel because cause I was taller, <laughs> got a curly afro, but I also wrote... <laughs> You wrote and played the guitar songs. stuff, yeah. so, so um, he was just harmony then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but he had a booming voice. Uh, so, so we did those gigs a couple of times in Buffalo, to very limited, very limited support. Just a couple of drunk people showed up and you know kind of heckled us, and 
you know, still have a recording of some guy heckling us back in the old days. And just, it was just funny that, that, that nothing deterred me really back then. And then I had a band, I met a band in college. You know, I went to college after high school. You limited success. You know, I dropped out of college, but you dropped out with a band that moved to Boston from Buffalo. My college was outside of Buffalo. And, uh, and so then we started a gig in Boston, but you were not that much. But I started to, to do coffee houses on campus as a solo artist. And uh, so I was more comfortable just kind of doing solo gigs. And then I had another band in Boston, and we signed a record deal, and it was a whole... that That's when I first started making a living while playing music. I was actually going to ask about that, that, yeah. that ascent from uh, the Push Stars yeah. being kind of a local band to getting... My Imago is a, a pretty big label, kind of Paul Cole's on that label, yeah, yeah. for instance. And then you got Capitol Records got your attention in, in 1999. Mm-hmm. Um, what bands were you kind of competing with at that time? What, who were you? Who were your contemporaries at that point? At that time, at that time, Capitol's uh, big bands were, I think, I think Radiohead, Everclear, maybe at the same time. Everclear, Meredith Brooks, yep. get a big hit then. But Capitol had, had a weird situation because they. They didn't really have much of a struggle making money because they, they, they had such a big catalog of Beatles and Frank Sinatra and that, that kind of stuff. So 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 they they definitely had financing always. Um, so we only made you know one record with Capital. But but what, what happened was my college band that I moved to Boston with, we were we were really you should think a very good band, but with no business acumen at all. Hmm. We would practice for six months a year, then do one gig, and then go back to the practice space for six more months. Then do one gig, and then kind of look back and say, "Why haven't we made much progress in the past year?" So even though we were super tight, and and so then a couple of the guys moved back to Buffalo, and then then I quit music, and you know I blame myself for that that band's failure, and and then um, and then I just started I started to do solo gigs. Where, I just made a decision. My father actually pushed me. He was like, you know, you know, give it a shot. You're still writing songs constantly, and so try to make a living from it. And so I started to do coffee houses in Boston. And there's one point that I featured at one coffee house where I made 50 bucks in tips because cause people tipped. And I remember that that was a lightning rod moment where I can, I can get paid to sing. Sing my own songs, and so then um, like I met a drummer at one of the gigs that one of the gigs I played, and he was is is still he's still living. Uh, he, he he told me, Chris, I'm going to get you a major label record deal in one month. He was so excited about meeting me and l- liked my songs so much. So we started working together. Then I had a, an old friend of a friend from college who was working at a recording studio. So he actually he actually said, come make a demo. Uh, we had no bass player, so he sat in on bass, and we just liked that that first demo, and we got on so well together, and then that that demo got, got assigned. Six months later, we we're like, "Yo, oh, I guess we're doing this," because it just kind of happened. And then we got a got a big music lawyer who who's also Nirvana's music lawyer, and then we had a got a really really big showcase with like thirteen labels showed up. It was all those classic things. You know, limos it, at the airport when we were all broke and like we had no money at all. But but you were being picked up in a limo in Los Angeles. He's driving around Hollywood, so that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> uh, oh, I know it doesn't. No, I know. Um, so then we had a nice run for for a decade, opening for cool people and and then we headlining and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So it's a good thing. Yeah. Well, about a decade ago, in an interview that we did together, you said something along the lines of, "Uh oh, <laughs> I don't have any, I don't have any other skills." So, if you were forced into retirement, I mean, the pandemic could have easily changed yeah. your path. Oh, big time! What yeah. would it? What would you like? What else could you do? That's such a. You have to have some other skills, Chris. That was a joke. I really don't. Uh, <laughs> that's that's such a great question because because I, I uh, you know, I was confronted with you thinking about that. Of course, because like, hey, there's no gigs and. Fortunately, you know, I did live streams and then backyard shows and found ways to augment it. You know, I was lucky that I could be a one-man band 
Because mm-hmm. if you're a bass player, you can't do anything. It's is it going to do? You're not going to do a, all bass playing live stream. Not very often. You might not get a big audience. Uh, but were the live streams lucrative? Did you make any money on those? Well, I wouldn't say that publicly. Um, oh well, this but, is publicly. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> it's funny because I, they have this constant thought in my head. Let, they worked at a grocery store when I was 16. You know, my mom's birthday gift, when I turned 16, she's like, we're go- going out to put in applications for jobs. And uh, I love that 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 lesson she gave me because she was, usually work ethic is very important. That's how we celebrated my, my birthday. But like, I got a job at, at the supermarket in Buffalo called Super Duper. <laughs> and, you know, I was a cart boy in the winter, you know, pushing carts through the parking lot, but but I, st- but I always remember this one guy who worked in the produce department there, who managed it. They managed the, the produce department. So I think he was one of these guys who was like in his late thirties, maybe high every single day, uh, 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 on the job. And but you know, I was always looked at him, and he just seemed so happy because his job had limited responsibility. It's like is the fruit fresh? Yes, I'll put it out there. Um, but he just always seemed happy to me, so I always picture him. So I'm always like, maybe a grocery store job would be something you know, I'd like to do. And then I worked in the hotel industry later on, and I kept getting promoted to get that job. So maybe I would have done something, he's managing nice properties somewhere because like, he's a manager of he's a very nice hotel in Boston, the Copley Plaza, he kept recommending me for for better jobs in the, in the hotel. And at one point, it became a, a, a debate because I had hair, because I hair, you had hair like you had, uh, very oh, very long the hair. Picture I showed you, yeah, long beautiful hair. <laughs> and he said, "I'm going to give you a better job if you cut your hair." And you know, at that point, it was decision time. You know, I decided to keep my hair, be, being stubborn, thinking, you know, I don't think I want to be a GM. Uh, of a hotel, but maybe someday. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I feel very blessed that the music has, has paid the bills. I got to buy my parents a house at one point in time after a movie soundtrack happened. And yeah. uh, so you so I got to repay them for the, their support back then. And, nice. And, uh, but so far it's worked out. But, but I never, but I never take it for granted. You know what I mean? Shouldn't. That, 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 your next year, I won't have to have to rethink my my life, but that fear keep, keeps you motivated. Sure, you know what I mean. My guest today on Acoustic Alternatives is Chris Trapper, and it's time for another song. Chris, all right. What would you like to do? Speaking of soundtracks, this this is a song I have in a new Casey Affleck movie. No, oh. and it's called. His movie is on Hulu now. Uh, his movie is called Every Breath You Take. It's the first time I ever wrote a song for a scary movie, mm. where he plays. He's not the psycho, but. The guy, the guy who plays the psycho is uh, Ned Claflin. Okay. I, I think that's his name. What's so, no, song? no, Sam. Ah, never mind. What's but the song called? It's called. Uh, I'm totally spacing on what, what the song was called. Uh, I'm going to think of it by the end of the song. Tell me when it's over. Okay, here we go. Oh, tonight I think I'm gonna try to slip out the back door I've been blind to the sign that it's not in my mind anymore Gonna walk through the weeds and then fall to my knees by the shore Oh, I love you more So soaking wet from the sea And you ran through the sand Wrapped your cold hands all over me It was June neath the moon It was over too soon Can't you see Oh, I love you more Oh, I love you Over and over 
over, I keep going over yesterday But I keep getting nowhere, I just want to go where I can fade away It punched out so the lights had come out on the town And the wind fell like glass so I drank to my past until I drowned Cause the one thing I'm missing, the thing that I wish would let go Oh, I love you so Oh, I love you so around acoustic alternatives that song doesn't sound scary at all no sounds like a love song no it's a bar scene where it plays so <laughs> <laughs> i love it's you supposed so. to be a bit of a party song but with a little creepy element to it so i figured like when i when i wrote it i was thinking about kind of obsessive love that that you just can't let go so that's that's kind of where that came from been there done that yeah that's do you remember the name of the song now you know what i i, I feel ridiculous but it's it's just the title did not did not jump out at me. It's uh, every breath you take. The song. Uh, I love you so. <laughs> oh Seems God. obvious. That's okay. Oh my God! I you think believe... I have to talk about Zingerman's Gray Line? You've can... been you've okay. Been, yeah, you've been to Zingerman's before, I assume. Uh, of course, you've I been have. to Ann Arbor a bunch of times. Yeah, many times. Yeah. So they they have a multitude of businesses, and one of them is a, a delicatessen. That's the most famous thing. They've got a roadhouse where they've got barbecue food, but they also have a couple of venues that you can rent oh. for your events. And one of them is in downtown Ann Arbor. It's called the Gray Line. It's where the bus station used to be. And they say it's a great place you can trust. And I've been there a number of times, so I can actually vouch for that. Uh, it's an ideal place for social events like casual or upscale weddings, rehearsal dinners, birthday parties, bar and bar, bar mitzvahs, retirement parties, tailgate parties. All those things can happen there right in downtown Ann Arbor. It's a great place for corporate meetings, training sessions, staff parties. They've got a sound system that uh, DJs like me can tap into or use your own sound system, overhead system that works really well. Of course, because it's associated with Zingerman's, guess what kind of food it has? Zingerman's, which is pretty awesome in itself. The team from Zingerman's Deli, uh, you get the most flavorful food and the best possible service. Uh, Tara over there has always been very kind, uh, leading her team there. She's great to me. A full service event planner uh, available as well. Zingerman'sGrayLine.com is the website if you want to look them up. You can also call them at 734-230-2300. Single serving appetizers, plated entrees, everything in between. Zingerman's catering and events. Uh, they are the experts that can serve you at Zingerman's Gray Line. So we want to thank them because without them, this isn't happening today, Chris. And I'm going to be honest. That's oh. true. Well, thank thank them so much. Yeah. because uh, I, I want to thank them by buying lunch at <laughs> Zingerman's today. Come on over and do that. <clears throat> All right. Did you remember the name of the song? No. Okay. Uh, we'll move on. <laughs> you can look right at my right at my phone in Spotify. Because the only, you know why? It's, be, it's because it's the only song in your mind that there's not a, got an actual record. Well, it's the first time I it's first time I released like, you know, just a single. That's right. It's available on the website as a single. I forgot. So about that's it. why it's that's why it's familiar. That's why it didn't it didn't lock in with me because it wasn't part of a collection. But will, it, will it be on a collection? Yeah, you know, the title is not that great too. So because because if it was, it would stick out to me. But that's uh, true. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be on my next record, whatever it is. But it's out now. Okay. With the movie kind of aligned with with that. So. Yes. Well, you've been a road warrior, certainly, 20 years at least since your first release as a solo artist. Along the way, you've made your fair share of friends, myself included. I'm yeah. appreciative of that. Yeah. Some of them have achieved great things, unlike me, Colin Hay, <laughs> Rob Thomas, yeah. the boys in Great Big C, just to rattle off a few of them. I know from spending a lot of time with you how nice of a guy you can be, so it's easy to see why these people are You said to can, you. can be, which is nice. That, there's a nice word choice. Very I, sp- I don't spend that much time with you. I'm sure you're a jerk sometimes, That's too. That's true, yeah. I am. I know I don't mean to be, but yeah. sometimes I can be. <laughs> right. But they're drawn to you personally, I think, the same reason I am. It's just because you're you. That in itself is a compliment. However, 
I think the bigger compliment for you as a songwriter is when somebody covers one of your songs. Yeah. Colin Hay is covering one of your songs for yes. his next record. Yes. Great Big C had a couple of pretty big hit singles with songs that you wrote or co-wrote with them. Mm-hmm. Rob Thomas used one of his on his last album. Yeah. Which, I mean, as as a songwriter, which of these is the ultimate for you? Is it all of them? Is it any of them? Is Well, well with Rob, um, Rob and I wrote some songs t- together. So so we co-wrote a song for his Christmas record that it just just came out. Um, I just love them all as people, honestly. So 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 that's that's how I view them, and don't think necessarily about the like, like like for instance, Colin singing my song is a huge like like, like that's mind blowing to, to me. Because had you told kind of younger me that that someday somebody of just his talent level in acumen will sing my song got to been like you know gtfo <laughs> is the kid's text yes uh well you and i are the same age so we know how big <laughs> men at work were in 82 and 83 yeah i i one of my bigger thrills in, in my radio career is getting him to say hey it's colin hey you're listening to the acoustic brunch on ann arbor's 1071 yeah. don't be yeah. a bad boy johnny don't you mess up <laughs> or play the fool i got him to say that that's pretty freaking <laughs> and awesome. i was like yeah i just had colin hey say something like Put on a gazillion yeah, mixtapes, you know. Yeah. Be good, Johnny. Was on a lot of mixtapes for girls. Yeah, so. yeah, of course. Yeah, has my name in it. Uh, yeah. So him, he also wrote one of my favorite songs of all time. Uh, you just waiting for my real life to begin. Oh yeah, it's a um, great song. You see, I can remember his name of <laughs> his song, but not my own. Okay. Uh, so that that's a huge thrill. Great Big C. When when that stuff you happened, we were writing. He's by the seat of our pants and, and touring constantly. So that, that that stuff happened. Like it almost felt like, like it didn't happen because we were so busy at, at that time. But you actually went to Newfoundland. You wrote songs with them in person. That was just just fun personally, and the, you know, great guys. And it was a lot of drinking involved. So I don't necessarily remember that 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 we had written or, or accomplished that much. And then it, one of those songs came out of that very successful. Like. It became a big hit in Canada, the number one in Canada for a while, um, and then uh, then with Rob, he he's just such a beautiful person that like like he's such a like he's such a successful guy, but but still so human and down to earth and cool and just just you see, he could be here hanging and there'd be no difference at all, just just a great vibe and great person. So 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 I feel super blessed to to have made. I'm not one of those writers. Who goes to Nashville? It, like, like that's just never appealed to me because if somebody I don't love is not. Like, if somebody has a hit with one of my songs that I don't necessarily necessarily know or love them, like it's 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 great, but that's not that's not what motivates me. It's more fun to hear somebody who I love. He's a person who 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 connects to one of my songs. That's that's a huge thrill for me. So, is there anybody you would like to collaborate with, or that you wish would cover one of your songs? You you just love to hear it. Mm. Never really gave that any thought. Well, the, this artist from Canada, uh, Chloe Albert, who she was up for a Juno a few years ago, and so she actually did a cover, one of my songs, just just kind of off the cuff. He's on video form, just just mm-hmm. he's a YouTube video. Yeah. That that she sounds so beautiful singing it that that I'm dying to get her, her to actually record it. <laughs> so 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 that would be a cool thing. Just just because I know she would do it so well. But that's the person I know. You know what I mean? That's what yeah. motivates me. It's just, just more the connectivity. When you're driving from town to town, what keeps you company? Music or podcasts? Both. Really? Both. Yeah. Yeah. Both. A lot of podcasts. A lot of talk radio. Um, a lot of, a lot of news, unfortunately, which I should stop listening to that. Uh, but, but it, it keeps me, it keeps me, it keeps me informed. And then, uh, yeah, lots of music and lots of phone calls and that, that kind of stuff. So I actually heard a news story the other day that was for your health. Basically it was recommending you stop listening to the news, like, yeah, yeah. um, <laughs> on <laughs> yeah. a news station. Like, yeah, no. Okay. You're like, uh, that seems counterproductive, but kind okay. Kind of, yeah. I'll there take that advice. Yeah. Particular great uh, music for you for the mm-hmm. road. Is there something that motivates you when you're driving long distances? No, it's more so just, just a specific song or something that, that, that I'm into at, at a certain point in time. So 
Well, making a living as a songwriter and a performer, really not that easy. It's a challenge, I think, for everybody who does it. Fortunately, you have had your music in several soundtracks and TV shows, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. How much of that is luck or how much of that is you've got a great team behind you? Well, I don't really have a team for that. Like, no. like so that's, I would say, I'd say luck's a huge part of it. I think what I think what happens is if you're nice to work with or good to work with or a good person, that then people remember. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I've gotten. There's a trail of people who, who this person led to this person who led to this person. So just just, just being recommended, but yeah. like by people, like you should ask this songwriter to 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 try to write something. Like for instance, August Rush. We wrote a song for that movie, and the pr producer of that he said me and a couple other things that he did the we did the Casey Affleck movie. Okay. So you're already on his radar then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, TV soundtracks and, and stuff. That's yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess it is a lot of luck too. So so yeah. You know, I always tell because people ask me that. Like a lot of young artists ask me. Like how do you get how do you get licensing stuff for your your film stuff? And I always say that it's being on tour is a huge thing because when I go to Los Angeles, it might not it might not necessarily be a thing where people will, will show up at my gigs who who do film stuff, but it gives me it gives me a reason to reach out. You say, Hey, I'll be in town and you wanna meet for coffee or something. So so you should think just being a viable touring artist has been a big it's been a big help to me so i've always it was always the first priority for me has always been touring and just seeing my schedule seeing like seeing dates on it is being viable this is my job this, this is what i do where some people kind of go the other way where they want to ha have a song happen first and then get get the other stuff so i don't know if that made sense but yeah well some of the soundtracks that your mu music has been included in include the devil wears prada some kind of beautiful something about Mary and August Rush. Mm -hmm. And just yesterday I was kind of Googling around because I know in the movie it's not you singing it, it's Jonathan Rhys Myers. Yeah. And somebody named Paul Ponce put up a video of scenes, or might have been actually the part of the movie, I don't know, it looked kind of grainy, where Jonathan is singing your song this time. Your video of this time has only 86,000 views, which doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. This video put up by Paul Ponce has 7.6 million views. Right. What the actual... <laughs> But do you, do you get monetized from that? I hope. I mean, this Paul Ponce is not like putting it up from the movie soundtrack. He's putting uh, it up just because he's a guy. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. There is something that that comes from that. Uh, YouTube makes sure that the songwriter. Yeah, I, mean, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think YouTube has been kind of, kind of they've been made to to start to pay out to songwriters because the you know it's not their content. Right. But but uh. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, like I try not to pay too too much attention to the business end of things, just just because sometimes that that can become too too priority, too much of a pro priority. So, Bogs so down I, your brain a little bit too much. Yeah, so to I work. try to yeah. separate ca kind of commerce and you know, art as much as possible, as long as I'm doing okay. You know what I mean? There's definitely times when I start to dig through my stuff and start to look at my contracts and start to look at that and make sure you're not getting screwed. Hire somebody to look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that soundtrack got you to the Grammys. I remember you telling me the story of getting to sit way in the upper, yes, upper yeah. balcony. <laughs> yeah, I saw McCartney like a like a, a little ant, but just to be in the room with him, yeah, was, was cool. That was pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, like like the August Rush soundtrack. There's a reason why that has so many views is because the movie was so popular. Yeah. Not 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 in theaters, but it had a post life that that was really really great. So you know, so it's a lot of people's favorite movies. It's because of that that. That song has done very well, and people know it. Something that came out the same year your first debut album came out, your solo album, I should say, mm -hmm. was Shazam. And have you ever thought about the impact that that might have had on your career because you're getting placed in TV shows and movies, and people go, "What the hell is that?" And then they hold up their phone and go, "Oh, I've never heard yeah. of this guy," and they follow you. Does that do you find that people come up to you in shows and say, "I found your music because of Shazam"? Or yeah, just in general. Well, well, the thing about my my career so far is that it's. Like there hasn't been one defining moment that's that's been like like this is when this is when I made it because I had a song in a Ford commercial or but there's been lots of little things so people will tell me all different th 
like like they heard me in a grocery store. Home Depot. They saw me open for Colin Hay or Martin Sexton or whoever or um or just or a radio station or just 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 various things. And so it's always interesting to to hear what's working. You sometimes it's been a YouTube video that that somebody sent them or uh like for instance there's a K-pop star who sings who sings my song from August Rush. Oh. So, you know, one day I had a bunch of fans show up from South Korea. Wow. Like young teeny boppers. So, so just just very random things that that happen it would be really fun to to just just discover how people found out about yeah. about a certain song I wrote in my bedroom at one point in time that people here in South Korea. You know what I mean? Like that's that's really it's, it's 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 an interesting process to just see you see how far a song can travel and your thoughts or feelings mm-hmm. or ho- hopefully both in a song. But you've also acted in a couple of movies. You want to tell me about that a little bit? Yes, I'm actually g- going to be another movie. Really. Uh, yeah, so so to to be totally honest with you, I've always um basically I know like I know I'm bad at acting. I I know it. Like like this is one of those things that, that for some reason it drives me crazy enough that I want to get good at it. So so I keep trying to to better yourself. To work at it, yeah. yeah. So I was in a movie uh it was a movie that's is right now on the festival circuit called a winter's love where i play an arrogant an arrogant ex grammy winning music teacher <laughs> and uh he said that's the first like it's the first time i actually had maybe 30 lines in it you know you know really kind of youtube videoed acting lessons and stuff and he tried to get better at it and so i think i actually got a little better at it and so my goal is with each thing to to, to get a little better but the nice thing about being a singer songwriter is that no matter what you do creatively, it can all pour back into you know, showing up in some town and you know, just a different like a different person knowing to me f- from some different way. Mm-hmm. So they could have seen me in a movie or heard a song in a commercial or that kind of thing. So I didn't realize until I was listening to an audio book of one of his written books that Alan Doyle was in the Robin Hood movie. Oh, yeah, he has a big part. I know. I just yeah. watched it because I'm like, I've never yeah. seen this. I should watch mm-hmm. it. So maybe one day that'll be your thing. Yeah. You talk up with Kevin Costner doing a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I definitely want to get better at it yeah. before I get, like, look, I'm going to be in another movie now that's a little better. It has a couple stars in it, so, okay. but but I don't want to jinx it. No. Uh, but um, Tell me about it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't off, talk about- off the air. Off. Yeah, yeah. How about another song? Yeah. I'm going to play a song. On a different guitar. On my other guitar. On the bedazzled guitar. Which I could have changed, but we were talking, but I, I, it's okay. I was engrossed in, in, in our chat. So. Thank you. Thank you for paying attention to what I'm saying. Yeah. It doesn't happen everywhere I go. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> Believe it or not. Likewise. All right. I did break a nail last night, so finger oh. picking is a little bit more difficult. But Why tonight? I know. <laughs> Luckily, it was the last song, so, oh. so, yeah. We're at the intersection. Should I laugh or should I cry? What's it going to be? I can barely decide I feel your frustration But you keep it in your mind And say I love you And we'll make it through We'll make it through We're on a roller coaster That we never meant to ride Started off so slow, didn't know it went so high. You slim me smile, but I can see you're terrified. I say I love you, and we'll make it through. We'll make it through. Ooh. Each time the sun comes up, I'm grateful for. 
for the day Though you're sleeping I can't help but kiss your face It's quiet times in this old house when nobody's awake That I think of all the things I need to say Remembering the first time we lost somebody that we knew The sky was falling and the birds stopped chirping too It's a helpless feeling when you don't know what to do Just say I love you And we'll make it through We'll make it through make it through We'll make it through We'll make it through One of my favorite tracks on the as of yet unautographed copy of Cold Water Waltz I'm holding in my hands It's Make It Through from Chris Trapper on Acoustic Alternatives I love that tune there, Chris Oh, thank you you say I love you to your wife. She's got a book coming out, doesn't she? Or did she already it's put out. out? It's already out. Tell it's me about out that. Now, okay. yeah. Tell it's called about. Rest and Return. Okay. He's doing very well. She she's actually much more famous than I am. What? Yeah. Because when we go out in Boston, literally, literally, she get gets recognized everywhere. I'll get recognized maybe once in a while. Like we're at one of my shows, somebody recognizes me. But, oh, that's good. But, yeah, they bought a yeah. ticket. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, oh. but yeah, it's a beautiful book. It's daily meditations. Uh, at the start of the pandemic, you know, we were both home, and and so we were walking in the woods all the time, and she was just t- taking pictures of different different things in nature, and she t- tied it into a really positive vision for for every day, taking a moment to just be grateful, and and it's it, it's a beautiful book. So I, you said, played with her at a couple book readings, and yeah. so book is again called what? It's called Rest and Return. So just restandreturn dot com. That that that's her book. So and your wife's name is Han Corey Trapper. Okay, there we go. That, people can actually find it now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, maybe. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. So is writing something you feel compelled to do, or do you feel like it's a job, or is it stories you want to tell, or where where is it coming? Do that's a great question. That's, that's a great question because I've been kind of commissioned to write a few times, but I always try to think about those situations, like like for the August Rush song. They actually sent me the script and had a very specific vision for what the song should be like, and and I so I did imagine each time I submit a song for your any project, if this does well, I'm gonna have to sing it again and again and again and again and again. So it needs to it needs like it can't be um bop. You better like it. And it can't be who let the dogs out. There has to be some degree of credibility, connection, and that that, that kind of thing. So so. It, so it's not even necessarily about liking it as much as it's about it has to tell a part of my story because that's why it's why I'm on the road is to forge kind of can make people feel less alone and make myself feel less alone. So connecting with people. And so the August Rush song, when I wrote it, what was cool was that I found something about the character that that I related to. He would he was like he just left his band. I just left my band. We were both in kind of midlife, midlife crises, and so I could write about that. Mm-hmm. So, um, but mostly writing is just like, like I don't often write by force. Like just usually, I just want to. Like I don't. Like I never think like I need to write a song. I need to write a record. I, like I have to usually. Like for the Rob Thomas tour, the, the funny thing is my newest record is a lot of kind of not not. Not sad songs necessarily, but but very heavy songs. And I wrote them, you know, mostly all on the Rob Thomas tour when, because he would t- take days off after every couple of shows, so we'd have a day off somewhere. So, so he was on one of the most joyous tours of my life. I, I was writing some of my saddest songs because it, that's how it works. It gives you time to reflect. And when I'm, if I'm going through a sad time, maybe I'll write a party song. Because that's what I need to feel, yeah. you know what I mean. But but um, mostly writing for me has always been it's a very similar process. It's it's just it, it's an outlet. It's like my it's like my diary, where I can I can listen back to songs from from the first Push Stars record in 1996, and you know know exactly where I was when I wrote the song 
in, in my life, what I was thinking about, what, what I was worried about, what I was connecting to. And so it's interesting. It's like that, that diary is out there for people. And so yeah. I also knew but the first time a record went public that, that, that I'm going public with myself. And you might, cause he's the first song and that, that, that first push stars record he's about masturbation. Well, there you go. So, so I was like, I'm going public. I'm going public. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't go blind. <laughs> yeah. Like they said I would. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, a little blurry, but, uh, <laughs> all right then. <laughs> yeah. Do you prefer being in the studio creating music or do you like being on stage more? Both. 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 Right? Both equal. The, the studio is like the lab, and the stage is like the like the party. You know, that's um, yeah. I don't know. That that's it'd be a tough choice. Okay. Because the studio is very. Because the studio is always very. It's optimistic because because you say no matter how many records you make, how many songs you you you've written and put out, like you like at least if you're, you like me. I'm a cockeyed optimist. Let, I think you have to be in music because because you're gonna have a lot of you know rough gigs and tough nights. That I always think maybe this next song's the one. <laughs> it's like, I'm still thinking about that. So maybe this record, maybe this because you honestly because you have seen certain songs of mine go places where I could have never imagined, like like as far as movies or overseas or, or whatever like, like the situation is. Like like so one of my songs, I was thinking about this. This recently, on George Clooney's last episode of ER, when he died in the car crash, it was my song in the background. Really? My song, it was a backdrop for for his character Which dying. Which song? It's Cinderella. It, okay. it's called, he's off the second, uh, off, the drive he's album? off the Push Stars major label okay. record. Wow. So, Wow. Yeah. I don't know if I knew that. Yeah. Well, Fun hey. Fun fact. There's something new every time we meet. I'm glad that, that we can still find <laughs> joy in, in discovering things together. I know, I know. <laughs> as far as songs, I know you're, uh, I mean, it's been a couple of years since this one. You're talking about a new record. Yeah. Uh, do you, are there a lot of songs that we don't hear as fans? Do you mm. throw away a lot? Or is it like your kind of economy, like I've written only good songs, everything else? No, you know, you know I have a lot of partial ideas that, that aren't finished. Okay. So those I never show people. Oh, I don't play anything for anybody until, until I definitely feel it's definitely done. Um, because I have the whole theory about jinxing yourself, and once it's public, it's it's done. It, it's it's done. So so if it's not complete, you must never be. Like like used to do that with the band a lot. We'd have a new idea for a song, you introduce it in sound check, and we'd start playing it live. You you never got finished. We just released a record of all B sides. And you also released this record. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the B-side record has some of the, those songs that, that we just started playing because we like like the sound check kind of jam session with it. It's just some of the lyrics are just not not right and not good. And you say, listen back, and I like, kind of have a few cringe-worthy moments. But uh, overall, overall, I'm pretty like they have a lot of half sheet of papers with like a verse in a chorus written down but but that's it and sometimes i'll go back and look at them and think well that's actually that's actually good you can turn that into something yeah i should finish that yeah. uh, that's interesting then more often it's like there's a coffee stain on it and it's not good <laughs> i'm gonna throw the page out in, in the garbage oh come on a piece of history <laughs> that's right that's right i mentioned at the start that the last time we spoke was uh, 2018 and you were actually playing songs from this push stars album which wasn't out at the time three feet in the air was coming out soon uh, is there more talk of a, maybe a potential another Push Stars record? You well, we we just did a Push Stars Christmas record. Oh, really? oh yeah, I have yeah, that. Yeah, that's uh, digital only, if I remember. Digital correctly. only, right? Uh, which is almost like, did it really exist? That's why, because there's no physical. I agree. Physical manifestation. You and I being the same age, we're gonna. Agree on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, what's next, though? Is it, I don't sounds know. like another like, solo album, right? You know, I'm looking for so, like, like right now. I'm looking for because. Because my last record was very specifically mellow. Like I just felt like that's where people were at, just yeah. just down, staying home and with families and connecting and uh, in a different level. So, so I'm not really sure. Like I'm not, I'm not really sure. There's so many things I want to do musically. They want to record with, with like like a record with maybe a Latin band or something. Just 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 to try something totally different. Mm. Or you maybe I'll do a rock record. It's it, it's just I'm not necessarily sure yet. So you don't have anything planned? Nothing. 
nothing planned at all. I'm wide open to, to ideas. So if you, so if you know a good polka band, maybe I'll uh, do I'll do some rapping on top of polka. Create yeah. a whole new genre. Not that. Pol- I do, I, polka gangster rap. I think it is time for a stopgap record while you're writing the next record. A live acoustic record has not been in your catalog yet. You know what? The, it's it's funny you mention that. Is but, it funny? Because because the. No, it's not funny. It's well, it's a little funny. No, you're, you're, uh, you're funnier than I. Yeah, I've seen that, you on stage. That's, that's something that's that's where the my team and I, which is one other guy, uh, we're, we're talking about. Hi, Nick. We're talking about yeah. <laughs> you, you're talking about that right now. So. Yeah, good. I think it's it's about the right point of your career because yeah, I, I go to your shows. It doesn't really necessarily this record is an exception, but a lot of what I hear at your shows isn't what I'm hearing on the records right i love both but yeah yeah i kind of get used to hearing you solo and acoustic yeah, so i'd like yeah. to have a record that kind of says hey here's chris trapper solo yeah. acoustic you see the only thing is that, that that there's jokes on it then i can't use them again because yes people will know the punchline and you'll so. just have to fade out in yeah. between songs yeah <laughs> ah, annoying. right well chris i look forward to whatever it is and i, I would love to hear another song before yeah. i let you go let me close with the, with the song that colin hayes get, oh, awesome. get also recorded on the push stars record yep so this is coming out uh, his version which is so beautiful uh, it, I think it's out it's, it's out March 18th so I'm only singing this because I'm vocally warmed up now so I can I think I hope Set off. Secretly scared we get lost. Up in the clouds, over the town, beyond the wall. Some of us knew we might fall under the weight of it all. And though we'd been warned of the oncoming storms. Still we stood tall So from the moon Straight to the sunrise This will be our time To free fall and nose dive Out of the black night Into bright lights with the whole world in our sight like a miniature paradise on the ground But I'm flying too fast to look down At the rooftops of trees And my family Waving at me So from the moonlight Straight to the sunrise This will be our time Free fall and nose dive Out of the black night Into the bright lights With the whole world in our sight Like a miniature paradise Trapper's been my guest today on Acoustic Alternatives. That's a song called Into the Bright Lights, available in many forms. <laughs> Push Star's latest album, yep. digital EP you released, as well as... My record, Symphonies of Dirt and Dust. I'm go. just going to release that on every record. I, 
you ever put out from now on until people really grasp the song. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep trying. I mean, once Colin Hay covers it, it's going to be a hit. Yes, yes. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Thanks Chris. Thanks for having me. This, this was great. A, a great format. Well, I think I babbled a little bit too much, but... I appreciate the opportunity. It's a conversation yeah, between that's right. friends. That's right. I, I, I'm going to publicly thank you for still. I mentioned one of my biggest thrills was Colin Hayes saying, you know, don't be yeah, a bad yeah, yeah. Another one was, we talked about this when it happened, but you thanked me in one of your records, like unsolicited. Like, oh, I had yeah. no idea yes. I was going to be thanked in the record that had Colin Hay and Rob Thomas as special guests. And like, yeah. and somebody that we both know said, have you seen the credits of the new Chris Trapper? I'm like, no, I haven't. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm in them. So well, I think broadcasters are kind of the. Kind of un, unsung heroes of music because because you're spreading it. Thank you. You know what I mean. So well, great to see you, and I hope Likewise. to uh, see you next time you pass through town, which will be if you're watching this from Michigan, you'll be in town with Alan Doyle at the Ark in April. And that's I'll, right. And yeah, I'll yeah. be there as your as a as a patron in the audience. Just That'll like be great. Many That'll people. Be, yeah, I can't wait. Acoustic Alternatives this week brought to you by Zingerman's Gray Line. Zingerman's Gray Line dot com seven three four two three zero two three zero zero it's a great space you can trust if you're looking to hold an event somewhere. That is definitely a great choice in Ann Arbor. Please check them out. And again, thank you to my guest, Chris Trapper, and thanks for joining us.